everybody. Hello. Welcome to a special episode of See, See You Real, Real Soon. Soon. This week, we're going to show you a special tool we created to help you budget and compare different dining plans that Disney offers, as well as the option of not using a dining plan at all. First thing you want to do is click the link below to download the file and we'll walk you through it. If you'd like, pause the video now and once the file finishes downloading, open it up and then continue watching the video as we walk you step by step how to use the calculator. Alright, so take a look. Let's get started. The first thing you'll want to know is that the only cells that you can modify are the yellow colored cells. That's so that you don't mess anything up. The first thing you're going to want to select is the number of adults in your party. So using the upper left yellow thing, you see number of adults, click the drag down menu, and it'll say zero to 10. So we'll select two adults for this trip. We're also going to say that we have three children. Whoa, whoa, Joe, three children. Don't get ahead of yourself. All right, we'll say two children. That's better. And as you can see, we put here the ages that you'll know that they put for adults and children. So if your child is over nine, so 10 or up, they are an adult. The next step is to select the number of nights, not days, that your trip is going to be. This is because the Disney dining plan runs based on the number of nights of your hotel stay, not the number of days you're gonna be in Florida. So for this trip, we're gonna do a seven night, eight day vacation. The next thing you have to fill out is the percentage you tip on average. So what do we want to say? We say we leave 20%. 20%. The next cell is a little bit different. This one requires a little bit of knowledge. Tables in Wonderland is a discount card that you can get at Walt Disney World if you have certain qualifications. One of them is that you are an annual pass holder. Another one is a Disney Vacation Club member and the other is a resident of Florida. If you are not any of these, select none. For the sake of using this spreadsheet, we're gonna say we have annual passes so you can see the discounts that it brings up. This will be brought up down below where it says estimated tables in Wonderland cost. Let's move on to the right side now. What percentage of adult meals, not including buffets, will you order a non-alcoholic drink in? This includes soda, juice, bottled water, anything like that. So we're going to say we do that at 75% of our meals, almost always, but sometimes we may not. The next cell is what percentage of your adult meals, not including breakfast or buffets, will you order an appetizer with? These could be, you know, a multitude of things from soups to, you know, mozzarella sticks or whatever they offer at specific restaurants. Personally, we aren't big on appetizers at Disney World, so we're going to go low and say 25%. There's only a couple of restaurants we really enjoy them at. Next, what percentage of adult meals, again, not including breakfast or buffets, will you order a dessert with? We're going to go with 50%. Sometimes we like dessert, sometimes we don't. Joe, you always like dessert. That's true. So maybe we change that to 66%. Two-thirds of the time. Hmm. Now you may have noticed that in these questions we asked only about adult meals. That's because in kids meals, all drinks and desserts are included. Next, how many snacks per person per day will you buy on average at the parks? Now this is a very, very wide ranging array of things. These include bottled waters, Powerades, ice cream, fruit cups, cake, anything that Disney really considers a snack. So we're going to say that we, on average, will get maybe two per day per person. We'll get maybe a drink and a, either a Mickey bar or a Dole Whip or one of those. Ignore this one here for right now. This will come back to later and you'll see why. Now that we've gotten through all of that, let's get to the fun part and start picking where we're going to eat. So we've decided for this trip we're staying at Disney's Polynesian Resort. And we're arriving on day one. Our flight gets in around lunchtime. So we're not going to have breakfast on the first day we arrive. We're, not also, we're also not going to do a park that day. We're going to hang out at the hotel. So the first thing we do is select lunch. We're just going to hang out at the hotel and Captain Cook's is a quick service restaurant at the Polynesian. 
So once you click on that bar, you see all these options that come down. They're broken down by location. So you see up top, we got Hollywood Sur Studios Table Service. Magic Kingdom's up here, you can't really see it, but you see some of the results. It also will tell you how many credits next to it it is, or in this case, Dine with an Imagineer, it's not on the Disney dining plan. You see below it, this is a two table service meal. So all your table service meals are at the top. You go by park, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and then you go to your resorts. Then lastly, Downtown Disney. After that, we come up on some counter service restaurants. So here's Magic Kingdom. Be Our Guest is one counter service credit for lunch. You keep going down and you see again, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, Epcot, Resorts, and Water Parks are also on here. Because remember, they don't have any table service restaurants. All right, so let's find Captain Cook's. Captain Cook's is a resort counter service meal right there. Now you notice at the bottom, results start filling in. And it'll keep filling in the more you go. So for dinner that night, where do we want to eat at the Polynesian, Ashley? Ohana or Kona? Mm, I think I'm in a Kona mood tonight. All right, so we find Kona Cafe, one table service credit, and it pops in. Now you'll notice anything that appears green is a counter service credit. Anything that appears purple is a table service credit. If it appears red, it is not on the Disney dining plan. And if it appears blue, it is two table service credits. So the second day of our trip, our first park day, we're going to go to the Magic Kingdom. Where do we want to eat at the Magic Kingdom, Ashley? Hmm, I'm feeling in a very princess mood. Let's do Cinderella's Royal Table. All right. As you see, remember, Cinderella's Royal Table is two table service credits. And it appears blue. For lunch, let's pick a counter service meal. Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe. And for dinner, another counter service meal. Pico's Bill. The next day, we're going to go to Disney's Hollywood Studios. We'll have a quick breakfast at the hotel. And for lunch, we're going to try something really cool, and we're going to dine with an Imagineer. This is offered at Hollywood Studios, and as you see when it appears in red, it is not on the Disney dining plan. Now, to help you get through this process a little faster, we're going to fast forward through planning the rest of our days. All right, hold on a second. We're going to choose one here for dinner that night. We're going to go to hoop de doo Review. Now, hoop de doo you'll see as many options on here. hoop de doo is broken down into categories 1, 2, and 3. And then the dining plan availability is also broken up uh, category 1 by the 4 and 6.15 shows not being on the dining plan, and the 8.30 show being two credits on the dining plan. So make sure you pick the correct show and the correct category as the pricing varies based on each one. All right, so we have our results. Now looking at the bottom, you can see based on the dining plan how much you can expect to spend on each one of your vacations. As you can see, it would be $2,216 for the quick service dining plan, $2,071 for the regular dining plan, and $2,389 for the deluxe dining plan. Remember, this includes the cost of the dining plan and any meals and gratuities that are not covered by the dining plan. Finally, we come to out-of-pocket costs. This would be if you did not get a Disney dining plan. In this case, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, tips, all broken out, would come out to $2,096.09. Tables in Wonderland is a program Disney offers, like I said before, that you have to purchase. The cost of the card varies whether you're an annual pass holder, Disney Vacation Club member, or Florida resident. For annual pass holders, it is $100 to buy the card. You then get a 20% discount on many table service restaurants across Walt Disney World. However, an 18% gratuity is automatically included. So now that we've looked over all of the costs of each of the dining plans, you can see and maybe change some of the things you've had to make it work. So for an example, with the quick service, we showed you that two of the dining credits were not used. So why don't we play around a little bit more with the things that we chose to see if we can get those used and maybe bring the price down a little bit. Let's change Crystal Palace to a counter service restaurant. The lunching pad. 
Now we only have one credit not used per person. Let's change the guard and grill. To the electric umbrella. Now all of our credits have been used. And now you'll also see that the total dining cost is a lot more in line with the regular dining plan. You see only a five dollar difference depending on which dining plan you get. However, it is now cheaper to go out of pocket than to get a dining plan. Tables in Wonderland still a little bit higher because as you notice a lot of the counter service restaurants we've chosen are not eligible for discounts via Tables in Wonderland. So Tables in Wonderland tends to be a better deal the more table service restaurants you go to. Now Joe, what was that thing we skipped over earlier that you said we go back to? Something about an average? Okay, so up here you'll see would you like the estimated meal cost to be on the low side, the high side, or about average? The way this works is that if you select high, it'll choose almost the most expensive thing on every menu at Walt Disney World. So let's do that and see what changes. Now you can see that the quick service dining plan is not as good of a deal as the regular dining plan, but the regular dining plan is slightly cheaper than out of pocket. That's because the things that you would have gotten on the meals that are covered by the dining plan don't change on the dining plan. So how would you know if you're buying more of the high costs? You'll want to select high if you eat a lot of steaks, seafood, or just generally expensive things when you go to a normal restaurant. If you are more of a pasta and salad eater, you may want to select low. This is what you can expect the lowest. If you go the cheapest way at every restaurant, this is what you can expect to spend. And again, we'll see the costs change. Now, look at this. You're within a dollar on the quick service dining plan and the regular dining plan. However, not getting a dining plan is almost $100 cheaper. And Tables in Wonderland now is also $4 cheaper, and that allows you a lot more flexibility as well. So that would be something that you would consider if you were an annual pass holder. But for the most part, I like to stick to average, and that gives me a general average, but the high and low is what you can expect your possible range to be while you're eating at the places you've selected. Maybe it would be best for you to check out the menus of many of these restaurants. You can find them either on All Ears or other Disney-related websites. So this tab is now complete. You've completed everything on this tab to plan your vacation. Let's say this is the way we're going to leave it. Next tab you're going to want to go to is here at the bottom. See where it says Ideal Way to Use Your Credits? Click there. Now it'll tell you at the top the length of your trip we said was seven nights. And the dining plan here would be the quick service plan. If you go to the right, you'll see the regular dining plan. If you go more to the right, the deluxe dining plan, out of pocket, etc. Now, what does this tab do? Well, you've already figured out that you're not going to have enough credits to use all, at all of your meals. So what do you do? You want to use your credits at the most expensive places. Sounds easy, but when you're there, you don't necessarily know what the most expensive places are going to be. So, this tab will rank them for you based on the most expensive to the least expensive per credit. And this is the order you should use your dining plan credits. Now, if you scroll down, these are the meals you would have to pay for out of pocket. Now, you'll see Dine with an Imagineer and Hoopty Doo are not on the dining plan. Also, you have your table service restaurants on here and no counter service restaurants because we didn't have any extra ones. But if you go over here, so you'd use your most expensive credit at Chef Mickey's. Your second and third most expensive would be your two credits it requires for the Cinderella's Royal Table, which is $87.93 per credit. So it's $175, $176 per, for both credits combined. Then via Napoli, Kona, and Ohana. Now here's one kink in the system. La Salière is your seventh most expensive restaurant, so it's telling you to use two table service credits there, but you only have one left, because remember, you're on a seven-night vacation. So in this situation, because the, there's no other table service restaurants down here, you would not use a table service credit Ohana, and you would use both your La Salière table service credits here, because you don't have another table service restaurant down here to replace it with. If you were also reading a Crystal Palace, you could just bump Crystal Palace up here and pay for La Salière out of pocket. Counter service meals, again, it ranks them in most expensive, and these are the ones down here you're going to want to pay for out of pocket. This one I like to use to rank my meals in general. So it's called out of pocket, 
cash does not include tips. So here you'll see all of your meals just ranked. It doesn't break them down in any order whatsoever. So you'll see dine with an Imagineer is $239 is what it's going to cost you to eat there. And it ranks it all the way down to your electric umbrella is your greatest bargain at just $38. The final tab is your free dining or resort discount tab. I'll let Ashley explain this one to you. All right, so let's answer a few questions first. Which resort do you plan to stay at? We said we were staying at the Polynesian, so let's pick that. What is Disney's quote for your free dining stay without dining upgrades? So we went on Disney's website and we quoted that our free dining stay would be $4,866. For Which dining plan is included with your free dining vacation free of charge? Free regular dining is what was included at all deluxe resorts. What is Disney's quote for your stay with a room only discount? No dining plan, no park tickets. So we got that quote and in a 35% off room rate, it would be $2,204. How many days on your park tickets would you need to buy? Put zero if you don't need tickets. That's for your annual pass holders or people who already have tickets, in which case you wouldn't be able to get free dining anyway. We'll say we had seven day park tickets on our original quote. Which of the following add-ons will you want to add to your park tickets? Pick none if not buying tickets. We got the park hopper option. Now let's go to the options. Option one, free quick service dining is not an option because we already had regular dining. Option two and three are also not available when you get free regular dining because they all have free quick service dining bases. But let's go to option four, free regular dining. So as you said, it's $4,866 for the resort. It includes your park tickets, your uh, dining plan, all of that. Now, using the other tab where we put in all the places we plan to eat, $869.85 would be the out-of-pocket meals plus gratuities. Our whole vacation total, not including souvenirs, would be $5,826. Now, if you were to get the free regular dining but upgrade to deluxe dining plan, it would be $756.84 to upgrade. You'd save a little bit on the out-of-pocket meals because more of your meals would be covered because you'd have more credits, but it's not as good of a deal in this case, $6,196. However, if you go to get a room only discount, pay for your meals out of your pocket and your ticket separately, which means you cannot get free dining, your room resort cost is $2,204. You don't have any up additional upgrade cost because you don't have a dining plan. You have to pay for all of your meals out of pocket at $1,852.51. Gratuities, park tickets would be added in, and then the upgrade for park hoppers, and now you're at $5,578.83. Wait, so free dining isn't the best option in this case? Not in this case. In some cases, free dining is definitely the better option. But in this case, you're better off getting a room-only discount and paying for your meals out of pocket. Okay, so I think that's it, right? That's it. Go play around with the spreadsheet. Have some fun. Play around with all the different options. Eat at different restaurants. You know, change Cinderella's Royal Table to 1900 Park Fair. See how much your costs change. Change an extra day. Say maybe you want to stay eight days or eight nights. Leave one of the kids at home. Only bring one kid. <laughs> uh, we'll keep two kids on there. All right. Change how often you order drinks. Say you want to order no drinks. You're only going to drink water on this trip. Look at how much money it would save you. Say you're going to order drinks at all your meals. Look at all the extended costs. And of course, we love the rides at Walt Disney World, but the dining experience is sometimes just as fun. So make sure that you are going to the places that you like and enjoy, and you can really just see what works best for you. So a couple of disclaimers. All prices are estimates and in no way guaranteed. Menu prices may change at any time without notice, and individual results will also vary by food preference. This plan does not include alcohol. If you plan to purchase alcohol, you'll need to add that up on your own. Alcohol prices are always fluctuating and they're very different depending on where you go. At Walt Disney World, adults are defined as anyone 10 years of age or older. So although in the real world, we might not define a 10 year old as an adult, Walt Disney World does. So keep that in mind when picking how many adults and children you have in your party. 
We hope that helps. We both know how hard it can be to make decisions because there's so many different dining options on where to eat and what plan to choose or if to choose any at all. We've had a lot of people try this out already and got a lot of positive feedback as to how much it really helped them make a cloudy picture a lot clearer. And I have to give all of the credit to Joe. I really had nothing to do with this dining plan tool, but um, you know, it's all, all his work and uh, he did a great job and I'm proud of him. And I think all of you will appreciate it as well. Yeah, so enjoy and have a great day. <laughs> So enjoy. Until next time. See you real soon. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow.